What's up everybody, it's John from Awe of Tech coming at you today with an awesome video. This is my review of the Ryzen 7 1700. I also have the Ryzen 7 1800X, the Ryzen 7 1700X to be included in today's benchmarks and review. But the center of today's video is gonna be around that 1700 because this one really caught my attention with its TDP. This chip runs so cool with a TDP rated at just 65 watts versus the 95 watt TDP of the 1700X and 1800X. So in today's results, I have these all overclocked to the maximum they could achieve at 1.45 CPU voltage and the memory voltage at 1.38. So it's really important to note that these three processors are all from the same silicone. They're actually just binned based on their properties, the 1800X with a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz boost up to 4.0 gigahertz precision boost, taking it up to 4.1 gigahertz when under the right conditions and the right cooling. The 1700X base of 3.4 boost of 3.8 and the 1700 base of 3.0 boost of 3.7. So I've only used air cooling in today's benchmarks, the Noctua cooler that came with the review kit. And I'll put links and full details of the system configuration down below for those of you that are interested. Essentially, it's two eight gigabyte sticks of Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM at 2667 megahertz through all these tests. And my Ryzen 7 1700 with just air cooling reached 4.0 gigahertz, very stable at that clock speed throughout all the tests. So that was really pleasing to see. The 1700X at 4.0 gigahertz or 3.95 gigahertz for some of the tests and the 1800X at 4.1 gigahertz. So before I jump right into the benchmarks, let me preface all this by reiterating that this was just with air cooling. So actually my Ryzen 7 1800X fell behind the Ryzen 1700 because of its thermal design power. It heats up quite quickly, so when running at stock speeds, SenseMI down clocks to keep the temperatures low. And if SenseMI is disabled and I just do a BIOS overclock to 4.1 gigahertz, well then the motherboard down clocks it to keep the temperatures down. So I would recommend for the 1800X, at least with mine, you definitely want to use liquid cooling. But for just air cooling, if that's the route you're going, the 71700 is definitely the winner here. So spoiler already with that. So let's jump right into the benchmarks. I have gaming benchmarks with the NVIDIA GTX 1070 and I also have a load of synthetic benchmarks as well as real world application benchmarks like in Adobe Premiere for rendering and coding. So let's quit wasting time guys and get right into this review of the Ryzen 7 lineup. Kicking this off in the really popular Cinebench benchmark, the Ryzen 7 1700 with a score of 1740, the Ryzen 7 1700X, very similar score of 1739 and the Ryzen 7 1800X takes the W here with a score of 1786 for the single core CPU, Ryzen 7 1800X 165, Ryzen 7 1700X 161, and the same for the Ryzen 7 1700. And moving on to another synthetic benchmark with PC Mark 8, the Ryzen 7 1700 with a score of 4431, the Ryzen 7 1700X with a score of 4382, and the Ryzen 7 1800X with a score of 4297. And moving on to PC Mark 8 Adobe Creative Cloud Test 2.0, the Ryzen 7 1700 with a score of 3705, the Ryzen 7 1700X with a score of 3781, and the Ryzen 7 1800X with a score of 3603. And here are the Adobe specific applications and their respective times, lower is better. And now for Adobe After Effects, this is Warp Stabilizer. I actually received the same results, whether GPU acceleration was on or off. So that's really important to note. This is 813 frames at 1080p, the Ryzen 7 1700. It took one minute and 55 seconds. The 1700X, one minute, 56 seconds. The Ryzen 1800X, two minutes. And for Adobe After Effects, 3D camera tracking. Again, the same results, whether the GPU acceleration was on. This is 2,307 frames at 1080p, the Ryzen 1700. 5 minutes and 21 seconds, the Ryzen 1700X, 5 minutes 26 seconds, the Ryzen 7 1800X, 5 minutes 42 seconds. And now moving on to Blender. This is the time it takes to render the Gooseberry production file. You can actually download this production file online since it's a really popular benchmark and takes quite a while, it's a lot of rendering. So this really puts these processors to the test. So the Ryzen 1700, it took 50 minutes, four seconds. The Ryzen 1700X, 
took 50 minutes and 23 seconds. It's important to note that at this point, I had to downclock the 1700X from four gigahertz to 3.95 gigahertz because it couldn't make it all the way through this 50 minute render at four gigahertz. The stability issues uh, did come to the fore during the Gooseberry production file. For the 1800X, 4.1 gigahertz, it took 55 minutes and nine seconds. So I do want to reiterate that with liquid cooling, obviously the 1800X would then perform a lot better. But there's little doubt that at a consistent 4.1 gigahertz, the more expensive flagship 1800X would be outperforming its two little siblings. And that all said, let's move on to the gaming benchmark. So unfortunately, with the GTX 1070, this was the bottleneck. The CPUs all perform pretty much the same within the margin of error, and that's whether overclocked at stock clock speeds, you really can't tell the difference, and I tested these a lot. That's at 4K, 1440p, and 1080p. So here's some footage of playing Doom with the Vulkan API at 1080p with the Ryzen 7 1800X, and you can see the CPU utilization right there on the right side of the screen, so that's obviously the story that unfolds here. CPU barely being tapped into, and the GPU being the bottleneck, and you can also see that with my division benchmarks, which is a really cool in-game benchmark that actually shows you your total CPU usage during the duration of the test and your total GPU usage. And obviously the GPU usage is close to 100% and CPU usage, even when you take it down to 1080p, is around 40%. And then 1080p low settings, barely over 40%. And obviously that percentage decreases as you go to those 1440p and 4K higher resolutions. So for Batman Arkham Knight, high settings, no game works. At 4K, they received an average of around 50 frames per second. At 1440p, an average just under 100 frames per second. And at 1080p, an average around 125 frames per second. Now for Shadow of Mordor on ultra settings, 1080p receives an average around 165 frames per second. Now what's really interesting is just for fun, I wanted to export a video in Adobe Premiere and see what the FPS would be like in the Ryzen 7 1800X. And it was 153 average FPS running the benchmark while exporting a video MP4 in Adobe Premiere. So that's pretty amazing. That's such a small difference to the FPS while doing a lot of background application computational work. At 1440p, all had an average around 125 FPS, and at 4K, all had an average around 70 frames per second. Rise of the Tomb Raider, very high settings, DirectX 12. In the Mountain Peak at 4K, around 46 FPS at 1440p around 90 fps and at 1080p close to 120 frames per second and for the witcher 3 on ultra with hair works on all near 40 frames per second at 4k and for that 1440p resolution a little over 60 fps and for 1080p just shy of 80 frames per second and switching gears back to a really popular benchmark, that's 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra, the Ryzen 7 1700 with a total score of 4549, 1700X with a total score of 4565, Ryzen 1800X with a total score of 4552. The graphics score are all really similar here since obviously that's dependent on the GPU. But the physics score is what's really interesting here since that is where the CPU comes to the fore. So for the Ryzen 1700, a score of 19,982, the 1700X, a physics score of 19,910, Ryzen 1800X, score of 18,551. And now for some encoding in Handbrake. So this is an MP4 file to super high quality 1080p 30 surround. It took the Ryzen 7 1700, 17 minutes, six seconds, the Ryzen 7 1700X. This is at 3.95 gigahertz, 17 minutes, 40 seconds, and the Ryzen 7 1800X, 21 minutes, 32 seconds. And now for exporting video in Adobe Premiere, the Ryzen 1700, it took one minute, 40 seconds, the Ryzen 1700X, one minute 40 seconds no surprise here and the ryzen 1800x one minute 46 seconds and also in adobe premiere this is for rendering this is 1800 frames at 1080p it took the ryzen 7 1700 one minute eight seconds the ryzen 7 1700x one minute nine seconds and the ryzen 7 1800x one minute 13 seconds and with cuda turned off those do go up just a little bit in duration and rounding up this benchmark with another 3D Mark synthetic test, this is Time Spy, a DirectX 12 benchmark, the Ryzen 1700 with a total score 
of 6,346, the Ryzen 1700X total score of 6,346, and for the Ryzen 1800X total score of 6,315, CPU specific score of 7,702, the Ryzen 1700 with a CPU specific score of 8,094, the Ryzen 1700X CPU specific score of 8,109. Well, that pretty much wraps up this video, guys. Really hope you enjoyed it. It's obviously no surprise here with the current pricing structure of the Ryzen 1800X at $499, the Ryzen 1700X at $399, and the Ryzen 1700 at just $329. Getting the extra 3.7 to 4.1 gigahertz really is not giving that much of a performance gain, even if you want to liquid cool the 1800. At least it doesn't warrant, in my opinion, a 50% increase in cost for even optimistically a 20% increase in performance. Unless you're an enthusiast, then obviously the 1800X is pretty freaking sweet and pretty incredible. And all three of the Ryzen 7s are just insanely awesome, blowing away the competition Intel, really disrupting the market with Intel's pricing structure of the $1,000 6900K. Multi-thread is obviously the future, barely tapping in. This is with the GTX 1070, barely utilizing the CPU, the GTX 1070 in today's testing being the limiting factor. I need to step it up to a 1080, 1080 Ti Titan X for future videos. So you know what's up guys, please be sure, drop this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Comment down below if you have a comment, let me know if you've picked up a Ryzen processor or you plan to pick up a Ryzen CPU. And also if you're excited for Ryzen 5 that's coming out soon and Ryzen 3 that's also coming out quite soon. If you're not subscribed to my channel, Awe of Tech, what are you waiting for? Please be sure to subscribe. Can't wait to catch you guys in the next video. Peace.